Today's video is brought to you by Skillshare, but more on that in a moment. There is absolutely no hiding from the fact that Magic the Gathering is an expensive hobby. We are paying to play with luxury cardboard. Would that be from the few hundred dollars of a rotating standard deck to the potentially 600 to 1,000 dollars of a modern deck, or whether you're just dropping $50 each set release on arena boosters, Magic is quite expensive. And to address something here, whilst Arena is free to play in theory, it does take time to do all the drafting, so it's not free, because time is money. And Commander is probably your most budget-friendly format, barring Kitchen Table, which isn't a format, so fuck off if you're thinking of suggesting that. But Commander can be budget, but the moment you start to even edge towards making your deck efficient or powerful, it gets expensive. Like one copy of Ristic Studies is going to set you back 30 bucks, which is kind of wild when you think about it. That means you should probably pre order your Arcane Secret Lair. Am I right? Accessibility and cost is a huge discussion point within this game and this hobby and this community. MTG Finance YouTube channels exist, and commentary from channels like this very one you're watching now on this topic is popular. So in today's video, I want to talk about how Magic the Gathering is getting dearer and dearer. It's getting more expensive but it's probably not for the reason you're thinking. I would assume most people are thinking of this stuff, right? Reserved list cards, when I think about magic getting more expensive. Reserved list cards are scarce, and they're desirable. And they're getting more desirable as more people come into the game. The game is growing. Add to that things like the reserved list, meaning that these can't be reprinted, and then buyouts on top of that, and older formats like Legacy and Commander creep ever upwards in costs and become less accessible to play, uh, not even just like the most powerful thing, but just even moderately optimal. But what if I told you it's not the reserve list and older cards that are the chief concern about accessibility? What if I told you formats like Modern, which has no reserve list in it, all the reserve list cards are old enough to only affect Legacy and Vintage, and to a lesser extent Commander, but Modern is getting more expensive? What if I told you they're getting more expensive because of the brand new cards printed only recently? But before I get into that, I need to pay my own mortgage and pay to play this fucking expensive game. So first, a message from our sponsor. I assume you've heard of Skillshare by now, as it's one of the best learning platforms on the internet. But if you haven't, then let me explain. Skillshare is an online learning community featuring classes from some of the biggest and brightest in their field. Video lessons and class projects combined to create a learning environment that can make a real difference to real working creatives like myself. From illustration to crafts to video production and filmmaking, Skillshare has something for everyone. Everyone. I've talked before about MKBHD's videos about scripting and shooting, and on the beginners and intermediate and advanced looks at Premiere Pro from uh, Helise Neves and Jordi Vanderput, both professionals working in content with tons of practical knowledge. And now with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and Dutch. Look, I tried to read that without reading it off the screen in front of me, but I couldn't remember all four. I'm British, so basically the rest of the world doesn't exist because we're pig ignorant. But now with subtitles in all those languages, Spanish, French, Portuguese, and Dutch, there is no better time than now to get involved with Skillshare. The first thousand people to use the link below will get one month free trial of Skillshare to start exploring their creativity today. So check out the link in the description below for your free trial, and thank you to Skillshare for continuing to sponsor my content. Right, Magic the Gathering. With the release of Modern Horizons 1 and 2, older formats were reinvigorated, and supposedly the new archetypes were invented, and they were to some extent. These sets injected new life into flagging archetypes or invented new ones with tons of powerful cards entering modern, legacy, and formats like Commander. Meanwhile, we actually got some reprints in the second Horizon set, namely the Fetchlands, and say namely only the Fetchlands, and we got a sprinkle of reprints in an old frame in the promo slot as well, but that's hardly worth counting. Fetchland prices went down, uh, inevitably. They're getting reprinted, there's more of them on the market. Now, something I want to clarify in this video as I talk about prices is I'm talking about them roughly where they are now. Even from me writing the script a day or two ago to recording right now, I've put $35 for Skull and Tarn, and I noticed they're like $38, $39. So I think they're already creeping back up. I think we might have had the, the bottom floor. But in short, as an illustrative example, Skull and Tarn was $60, and at time of writing, went to $35. They went down in price by anywhere up to almost 50%. Misty Rainforest from 50 to 30. Meanwhile, the non zenicar fetches actually sat largely unchanged, with one or two of them spiking a little bit in cost uh, as there's less than the market, and people were trying to hoover those up um, as well for some reason. I don't know. I don't really understand the trends of people buying cards, honestly. Meanwhile, with Fetchlands going down in price, Death and Taxes, a legacy deck that was often considered the most budget deck in the format, became almost, or in some cases, over $1,000 for the non Yorion version. If you add Yorion as a companion and 20 more cards to make an 80 card deck, 
it gets very expensive. For non-Yorion 60 card DNT, over a thousand dollars. The reason for that? Well, Solitude. A mythic rare from Modern Horizons 2 that is a $60 card. I got to MTG Vegas to play Commander and Legacy. And my Legacy deck was pre-pandemic. So that was pre-Modern Horizons 2. So I went to some vendors, traded some cards in, and bought some cards. And I had to buy Solitudes. And they were $50 a pop on that floor of MTG Vegas. Uh, $200 just for those, let alone Caldra Complete and a few other bits, including sideboard cards. $200 for a playset of four cards. I know it's legacy, I know it's expensive, but these are new cards that were printed very, very recently. The price of fetches have fallen by around, like I said, almost 50%, around 40% for the most part. But Legacy Delver is playing for Ragavan, an $80 <coughs> card, and for Murktide, a $20 staple. Uh, much less than the monkey, because the monkey is doing similar things to modern, where as a four of, it's pushing the price of decks up as well. It is a hyper playable, incredibly pushed mythic, in a premium price booster that probably should never have been printed. Read this fucking card. Why does this exist? And that's the funny thing, right? They're introducing mythic and rare super staples like Ragavan, which is hands down a four of wherever it can be played, really, or in any deck that can play it and utilize its effect, which is a lot of decks, to be fair. And it's a premium price product that wasn't not print to demand, but was effectively not really print to demand, not like a standard set, right? It wasn't opened on mass at a lower price point, so it's going to be expensive. On occasion, you have a breakout uncommon. A Dragon Rage Channeler, for example, which is still three bucks a pop for an uncommon. Uh, I think I didn't think they were ever expected to be as powerful as it actually is. And those things are cool. And they come from Horizons and they aren't super staples pushing the price of decks up. So that's nice. And the funny thing about all this is that we've been fed this lie for the longest fucking time. That Wizards of the Coast can't make any money off of Eternal Formats because they aren't monetizable. Even when they're selling us, say, box of magic cards at a premium price called Eternal Masters. I couldn't, on a cursory Google, actually find the source of this lie. It's a common recurring line that people have, like myself, have recited and sort of like almost internalized that these older formats aren't monetizable like standard. I don't even know if Wizards really started that or whether it was a creator at some point who said it and it's become, you know, gospel ingrained in the, the psyche, the zeitgeist. I don't know. But it's a thing that's been repeated to me often during discussions online. This is why you shouldn't talk about magic with people online. Because people online suck. I went to MCG Vegas with the main event, a modern event, sold out. And if you're wondering what's on screen, by the way, this is me in some Vegas hotel that looks like Venice, the Venetian. Um, I couldn't find a picture of me actually in the tournament hall. Uh, took more pictures fucking about around Vegas. Not the point, not the point. Back to the, back to the topic at hand. The, the, the main event of Vegas was sold out, and the success of supplementary premium price product aimed at Legacy and Modern, like all the Horizons and Master sets, they sell very well, and the ongoing ridiculous price and obvious demand for people playing Legacy and Modern, and then you add to that MTGO, and the fact that products aimed at these audiences can also carry Commander staples, and you start to get the idea, right, that Modern and Legacy and Commander to a lesser extent can fuel the selling of packs and product that is not standard legal. I'm pretty sure Battle Bond was a success, I'm pretty sure Conspiracy was a success, and arguably both of those are actually more so because of Commander, but the point is non-rotating formats can still sell packs because people play them and they have money and will buy this shit. It's such a dumb idea that they can't sell packs off the back of this. A quick editor's note, whilst I was editing this video, I did think that I laboured this point a bit too hard and I wasn't fair. But Battleborn and Conspiracy themselves have quite unique gameplay experiences, drafting them, playing them and all that sort of stuff. Th th that can be the selling point on its own, right? There's this... I do hammer a bit too hard the idea that packs are only sold for their reprints or chase rares for constructed formats, and that's not always the case, because cracking a pack can have other things in it, right? It can it can have uh, the, the tapping into the world building or the theme of the set, or allowing you to draft or play a particular limited format. So, I just want to add that. I think it's a valid criticism of what I'm saying. Uh, I'm almost like um, preempting a criticism of what I'm saying here. Uh, but I want to cover that base. That, that is fair and that is true. I feel like I left that out and I should have included it. On rare occasion, a card from one of these supplementary sets will make these older formats cheaper. A desirable card. I should highlight that before we move on. Astrolabe. Making formats cheaper, for example. It was a card that allowed you to play basic Snowlands, which were much cheaper than playing duels, and access four and five cards of mana. End up being too good, because the formats that had it in devolved into four and five color good stuff piles, so Astrolabe was banned. Uh, good job, Astrolabe. You made things cheaper, but you also made things more miserable. 
So, they are selling packs off the back of desirable chase rares that aren't going through standard, but instead go to modern, legacy, and commander. Bagavan is a desirable card, not because of commander, but because of modern and legacy. And there are more staples coming. There are things coming in more Horizon sets. There will be another Horizon set in the future. I'm pretty sure they've confirmed there's a Horizon 3 somewhere in the future. And Lord of the Rings, the set, uh, which I guess might even be a Horizon set, all but in name, is going straight into modern as well. Maybe because they thought that Lord of the Rings as a, uh, as a product or as a theme won't sell it enough on its own, so they wanted to sell it to uh, modern players. And with the power creep in standard sets and, and these supplementary sets giving us new powerful staples, things like your Ragavans and your Renin Sixes, these cards start to demand a big old price tag. Look at Force of Negation as a very good example of this. It needs a reprint. But instead of getting them in a mass opens main set, or in a commander precon, or in a secret lair, or in the list slot of the set boosters, we only get the follow up reprint as a promo card, a mythic variant of the promo card, one slot in every pack, as a one off alternative frame slot in Modern Horizons 2. This leads to forced negation price continue to climb rather than fall after a reprint, because it's not really a reprint. It's a reprint, but not in a meaningful way. It's not opened enough for it to affect the price. What this is doing is creating a thing called reprint equity, a term that has been popularized by Saffron Olive and some of his articles. In an article talking about Masters 25 from February 2018, he mentions that wizards need to change their approach to master sets lest they run out of cards to reprint to drive hype. And I quote, this is very prophetic and interesting, Seth, so you fucker. And I quote, Wizards can't make new expensive cards as quickly as it wants to reprint expensive cards, and the lack of expensive cards to reprint would necessitate changes to increase the amount of reprint equity if Wizards intends to continue reprinting cards at anywhere near the pace that has been for the past year or two. This is February 2018. This is pre-Horizons. This is at Masters 25 uh, preview season beginning, or, or middle of it. What is happening at this point in time that Seth is observing is that they keep doing Masters sets quite regularly because they sell because spoiler alert I know I've stressed it but you can monetize older formats with things like master sets but they're doing master sets a lot right and master 25 is coming up which ended up fucking bombing by the way in terms of audience reception and I think it also was the worst selling of the master sets anecdotally but I'll leave that there and he's saying that they're going to reprint so many cards all these master sets they're going to run out of cards to reprint as the cards in modern are going down in price oh nice and cheap reprinting the fetch lands though was something they only did once during that time in modern Horizons 3 what he is saying is they can't refill the well. If you imagine reprint equity is a well of cards that are worth money, as they reprint them, they go down in value, and therefore they're less desirable, and therefore they drive less hype for people trying to open packs and chase those rares, they're drying up that well. And then they announce Modern Horizons, where they can make reprint equity. They can literally refill the well with new push design. Then they also discontinue master sets for a while, so they stopped reprinting the older format staples. And then Fire Design also landed just sh just before Modern Horizons, so War the Spark onwards, Throne of Elt Drain, where each standard set was bringing herds, like whole groups of powered up, broken staples into older formats that were then chaseable rares too, creating things that can get reprinted later on in other packs. Do you see what I mean? They're creating way more desirability, way more desirable cards than they ever were before through more product and directly printing into older formats so they can avoid power creeping standard. But then they power catch standard anyway. So they've just got new staples for older formats showing up all over the fucking shop so they can reprint them later. There is now a ton of expensive mythics like Ragavan, Renin 6, Solitude. There are expensive cards from standard formats. Elder Gargaroth is like a $12 or $15 card. I tried to make a, a budget legacy deck recently, and Elder Gargaroth, for some fucking bizarre reason, which I wasn't even going to fit in with the Ragavan discussion, right? But Elder Gargaroth was the most expensive card I put into my Nick Fit deck in a budget deck list. Fucking weird. They have found a way to refill the uh, reprint equity well as they reprint stuff from it. And that way is to create powerful staples that warp, define, transform older format. And it'll be okay if they reprint these commonly, right? But from Modern Horizons 1 to Modern Horizons 2, with Force of Negation as my main case study, but there's a load of different rares and mythics you can see this with, Renin 6, for example, and other ones too. They didn't reprint it in a way that brought down its price. Therefore, Legacy and Modern both got more expensive with each release of Modern Horizons. And to balance out some of the venom and vitriol 
I really like Modern Horizons. They're really, they have been really cool draft formats. They're full of cool and interesting designs for the most part. There's throwbacks to Magic's history and lore that I love too. I'm a Time Spiral, Time Spiral Die Hard, one of my favorite sets of all time. So Modern Horizons ticks so many boxes. But alongside all of that, there are some seemingly bizarro world fucking rares and mythics that should not exist, like Ragavan. It seems like they were prepared to reprint Fetchlands once they'd realized that as they use up some of that reprint equity, they can generate more in the same set by giving us bomb mythics and bomb rares. Not everything from Modern Horizons is super expensive. Some of the rares are actually very affordable. Ignoble Hierarch, right now at time of recording, to age this video, is like fucking six dollars. That cannot last, right? Because technically, I guess Modern Horizons is still on shelves. But yeah, they were willing to uh, lose a little bit of reprint equity from the well once they'd figured out how they could top it up with more by just printing more expensive, must-need, must-chase powerful cards. I really wish they'd cheat the fetch lands like they do the shock lands, actually. A little side note. The shock lands have had so many reprints at this point, and they still hold some of their value because they're so desirable and pioneer and modern and commander. But, like, we've seen, like, three standard sets. We've seen uh, a secret lair. We've seen event decks and pre-cons with them dotted in them. We've seen um, uh, the expeditions, like, the infinity ones coming up. There's so many shock land prints. I wish they did that for fetches. There is a weirdness in the uh, Fetchlands being in Modern Horizons 2, though, in that Modern Horizons 1 was a success and seems to have sold and been popular without any reprinting it at all. So it was nice for them to make a concession almost and actually reprint the Fetchlands. There's actually, there's no need for them to do so. The, the packs would have sold anyway, right? Maybe not quite to the same extent, but there's desirable cards both Commander, Modern, Legacy players, so people would have picked them up. So credit where credit is due, at least they printed the Fetchlands there i guess ultimately the overall price of legacy has gone up and modern due to the injection of premium price boosters carrying expensive powerful and pushed mythics like ragavans and ren sixes and force of negation and legacy will continue to get more and more expensive over time as the reserve list never goes away i believe for the record that it should but i also believe it won't i did a video on that topic which will be in the in the description below and in the cards the little eye in the top right hand corner of the screen as well if you want to watch that video it's a real shame that the uh, the expense of modern and legacy which is always has been expensive is just getting exaggerated now by the injection of more and more expensive fancy mythics and rares mythics and rares that if we go by the modern horizons one to modern horizons two like pattern if we look back in history won't get reprinted in a meaningful way in modern horizons 3 or lord of the rings set like ragavan won't be in lord of the rings right unless they print Gollum as a skinned version of ragavan do you reckon that's where it came from do you reckon ragavan was meant to be Gollum? but then it'd be a Gollum with a creature type monkey and that's just weird modo used to be the cheap way to get into playing modern or legacy miles cheaper than paper and whilst it still is, the price of Delver went up overnight as four Ragavans practically doubled the cost of the Modo version of Blue Red Delver. This problem is even more pronounced as cards from sets like Horizons can't be redeemed on Modo, and thus they are cracked less because there's less desire to do so. Drafts are premium price with no redemption. And well, the MTGO economy is a fucking mess, even if it is a slightly less predatory than Arena's one. But a $300 playset of Mythics overnight is insane. For those who don't know, 300 tickets, as you're seeing on screen right now, is $300. The weird and crazy thing is that at one point Megaman was $400. $300 is the calmed down price over time. Big fucking yikes. But even Force of Negation is $40 on Modo. 40 tickets. 40, $40 basically. Again, just a super expensive staple. That was a recent print. That's just pushed the price of Legacy even on the cheap like digital client. We don't own the physical cards and reserve lists don't matter and the duels are cheaper. Has made it more expensive all that said all that said there is an argument that the managing of reprints and reprint equity is working that cards are expensive and that is a design choice a feature not a bug i hate it personally i just want people to be able to play fucking modern and legacy i wanted there to be a decrease in the price of fetch lands via the reprinting of them in a meaningful way to be able to do a budget legacy series and what's happened is a lot of the decks got dearer with stupid fucking staples. And now if you play a budgetized version of another deck, you lose to said stupid staples. Because Ragavan is an absurd magic card. And if you're playing inefficiently, you just can get steamrolled by it. So my wish was never granted. <laughs> budget legacy is just not possible.
So let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you think I'm onto something here? Do you think the average price of Legacy and Modern Decks is higher than it ever has been? Or at least was prior to Modern Horizons? I haven't got the exact numbers because I don't really have a resource to go back out and look at these decks other than like, scouring my own videos to try and see the prices and stuff. Uh, but you can already see it overnight, the transition and change overnight, especially on Modo. Modo is where it's most pronounced because there's no cost in the door lands. It's just an extra $300 or $400 on a... Doubling the price of a deck overnight. It's fucking mad. I hope you found this interesting and insightful. It was a bit rambling in the middle as I went a bit off script, but I think I tightened it back in in the end. Someone commented the other day that I need an editor. Uh, a, a writing editor, not a video editor. And they're probably right. But look, I'm a one-man band. Fuck off. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring my bullshit, and I'll see you all soon. Ta-ta for now.